everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Dork Side of the Ring podcast. I am the purveyor of all things dorky within the scope of professional wrestling and sports entertainment. I am Grum. Hello. Hello, hello, hello. Glad to have you guys here. Happy New Year. As I record this, it is the second day of of January, and it was a good New Year's for me. I hope it was for you a good, healthy one, a good, safe one. I hope everybody's intact. Everybody's starting off the New Year right with some good feels. If not, that's all right, because we got the good feels here over at Grum.TV. That's right, Grum.TV officially happening um, in the sense that uh, the Discord is now the where you go if you end up. If you put go go into your browser of any kind, you know, go in your Safari, your Google Chrome, your Firefox, your Microsoft Edge, your Bing. Uh, that Bing's a search engine, not a not a not a browser. Uh, what is it? What does Linksys use? Does Linksys have a special one? I don't know. Look here, all I do know is you go to Grum.tv. That's going to take you straight to the Discord. If you're in the Discord already, awesome. If not, uh, and you might still be in the Discord, and this does apply to you. As of the seventh so if you're listening to this on patreon you know about this or if you're listening to this on the 10th why did i sound like a muppet there uh if you're listening to this on the 10th when it comes out or anytime afterwards uh go in the discord we got rules get the at the bottom of the rules there's a check mark hit that check mark you hit the check mark you unlock the rest of the discord and whatnot so that you can hang out with the community talk vibe all the good things that's what we got going on here at the dark side of the ring. We're also, uh, as of uh, the last week, we start. I'm starting to put up uh, more vi- a weekly video on my YouTube. Uh, the first one I did is uh, right now. I'm. I should say this right. I haven't done it yet. I haven't finished it. I haven't even recorded it. I wrote it though, but I didn't record it yet. But I recorded and wrote, wrote the script for my series. My it's basically rank them. Rank them the series, six to my stomach. I give you my top six in any topic that you tell me to. So if you want to ask me some wrestling ones, you just let me know and I'll be doing them. But we're doing the first one I'm doing is top six, six like the top six, six to my stomach, worst ways the Philadelphia fan, like have acted. I, I don't know the title just yet. Six, you know, six to my stomach, uh, worst things Philadelphia fans have done, I think. Something simple like that. Um, but, uh, so that'll be up. Uh, I'm also going to have a monolock grumlock, a monotype grumlock, if that is a, it is a Pokemon thing. Long story short, it's a challenge run. I make it harder for myself. If Pokemon die, you faint, I can't use them. But not. That might be up your speed. Also might up your so later this month. We're going to have Pip Boy and Me episode one. It is me and my friends playing some Fallout 4. Uh, with them voicing my pit boy and kind of controlling me and also we've got some fun to happen uh videos where i just played a game with some friends goofed off and it it, it was what it was it's not it's, it's fun it's a fun video it was not a fun time towards the end of it but it was a, it was a fun time in total um that's what we got there patreon support.grum.tv currently up there uh, if you're listening to Patreon, you know this. But if you don't, uh, we've got the watch along from episode 12. Myself, Basque, and that duff guy Pat talking about the uh, the the Kurt Angle milk bath. So that's all there in in video footage, so you can see it and hear us react along with it. Uh, also, uh, what else is on the Patreon? I don't think anything else is on the Patreon just yet. Oh, I am gonna have uh, I have a a. Uh, so if you're at this tier, that's a twenty-five dollar tier. But the first epi- the first, uh, first thing we're we're doing for the twenty-five dollar tier is I'm gonna sit down with somebody I don't know just yet, one or two people, and we're gonna watch Bash at the Beach 2000. It's a lo- there's a lot in there, there's a lot in there. There's a lot of future topics we're gonna talk about. So, uh, but that's on the Patreon at the twenty-five dollar tier. The ten dollar tier is the foot the watch along. Five dollar tier is the early access. Uh, same price as a Twitch subscription. So if you're somebody who listens uh, or is a Twitch subscriber of some kind, uh, you understand that. $5 gets you early access. It gets you early access to my YouTube content and my Dorkside content. It also gets you speaking permissions during my live streams uh, when in my Discord. Uh, simple as that. Also, uh, I don't know what else I got to do. Oh, I guess I should probably talk about with <laughs> this week's episode. We're five minutes into this thing, and uh, I have yet not talked about this episode. This episode is a fun one. We got we got from the CPFs, Evil ESPN and Suze You Lose, a.k.a. Susie, 
Sue's uh, an evil hanging out. We're talking about the uh, the trial of Eric Bischoff. You saw that from the title. Maybe not. Who knows? Maybe just listen to this and you're like, what the fuck is this dude going? Yeah, trial of Eric Bischoff. Uh, it was in like 2005. A lot of fun. It's goofy. We also, also the fact that I picked this one mainly because Suze is a lawyer in real life. Doesn't play one on TV, but is one in real life. And uh, so I was like, all right, hey, Suze, like, what's like, what's the protocol if this were to happen? I'm like, this can't happen. What if this happens? Shit like that. It's a lot of fun. We talk about, um, also we talk about like, like uh, snacks, like daytime or like, like lunchtime snacks when you were a kid. Good conversations all around. Fun episode ahead. Thank you guys for continuing supporting us, supporting us via via just following on Twitter at Dorkside Ring, following on Instagram at Dorkside Ring, uh, giving the the reviews on the Apple Podcast Store, Apple Podcast Page app. Uh, five star reviews help us a lot. Gets us growing. There's a there's a podcast that's run by some bad people uh, or annoying people, some shitty people, and they got the same name. They got the dork side of the ring. Uh, there's also that's three now. There's three of us, but I'm the one that says the podcast, and I got the commercial with the I got the cartoon face. So that's the one I'm there. Without further ado, let's get Evil and Sue's inside the ring and have ourselves a fun little chat about the trial of Eric Bischoff here on the Dork Side of the Ring podcast. I cannot. I am just imagining. Like your 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 system is uh, of emails at work is just like an electronic train, which means there's a little like a electronic conductor. Oh, Sue's gone. Sue's left. This is great. Now I'm kidding. Hi, Sue. Sorry, I couldn't hear you. I don't know what happened. Oh, can you hear me now? Yeah, now I can. Okay, this is good. I was just rattling about how uh, I was. Uh, I now have the mental image of like an electric train. Picking up your email. Oh. Because <laughs> it's called tracks, and I'm like, train tracks, choo choo. It is a train. I, well, I know, but it's just like, I was sitting there, I was like, I, I'm guessing that's the name of the program. Uh, I wouldn't know. I don't work at all. I don't like working No, at all. The, tr- the tracks is like an actual train that I take to and from work. Oh. Oh, so... okay. Like, um, okay. the email, so here's what happened. The All tracks right. was coming at 5, or no, it was coming at 4.30, no, 4, 4.45, which is enough time for me to get off the tracks and get home. Mm-hmm. And I was trying to send this email. I finished at, like, 4.40, so all I had to do was press send. Mm-hmm. And then it's like, your email is disconnected to the server. The email is stuck in the outbox. Yeah. And I was like, shit. So then I, like, you know, closed Outlook. Then Outlook wouldn't reopen. Restarted my computer. So I missed the tracks. And it comes every 15 minutes. So I just kept missing it because my stupid email wouldn't send. (laughs) Okay. That makes so much more sense. I I was just, like, (laughs) I'm sitting there, like, every 15, like, is is there, like, a 15-minute, like, counter on the the email? Like, where it's, like, hey, you didn't send this email, so you have to send it. You got to get, you know. No. It was was such a pain. Like, I was freaking so out, like, sense. you don't understand, I was in my office, like, slamming my hand on the the mouse and the keyboard, like, I was like, I have to go, I can't keep missing this stupid track. That's, uh, <laughs> I was just like, well, I'm so, like, I was just, like, so confused, but no, that makes sense, I don't know about you, Evil, but, uh, I was envisioning electronic trains, <laughs> uh, picking up mail. Yes, yes. Yeah. yeah, the electronic track mail. Yes. Well, you know, it's, it's better than the uh, coal power one they used to run. Much more environmentally friendly. <laughs> uh, we're here on the torque side. Uh, I have two close personal friends. Actually, but, uh, happy, I believe this is Happy New Year to you listeners of the dork side. I believe this episode is going to air at some point in the new year. I don't know if it's the first or second one, but it's in the new year. Um I have two CPFs, two new CPFs, uh, two of the two of the goats, as some would say. Uh, I oh have. My gosh. With, oh, I have. Too kind. I have with me today, Evil. Hello, Graham. And Susie. Hello. 
Here we go. See, like I'm getting better at this. I'm I get out of I get into a rhythm and then I get out of it because I take like two or three weeks off, and then like by the end of the recording week that I'm like I have, I'm gonna be like, all right, cool. I remember I gotta introduce them individually so people can identify voices first. But <laughs> it doesn't matter. We're, we don't do things super professionally here. We're here on the dork side, though, but uh, it is good to have you guys. Thank you guys for coming on the podcast. Hey, no, it's my pleasure. Yeah, thanks for having me. I feel so honored. Look, you you should be honored. This is the greatest wrestling podcast that features people who don't actually watch wrestling, watching wrestling of all time. Um, I think I'm they're very, very niche category but i'm pretty sure i'm the be- i can safely say that i'm the best uh you know and it's because i have guests like uh, the two of you today uh so we normally do this individual or it will uh alphabetically not individually alphabet well also, i mean it is individually alphabetically uh the the introductions and whatnot so evil Tell the tell the tell the class, tell the listeners a little bit about yourself, where they can find you, if you want to be found, things you you work on, if you want to share. But, you know, it's like a it's like a Tinder profile, except it's for the dork side listeners, and just so that they understand a little bit about yourself. You know. Hey, I got you. Yeah, I'm evil or evil ESPN in the Tyler Discord. I uh, am the only Canadian in his twenties who's apparently not a streamer. So that, that's that's my claim to fame. Uh, I do not have any socials to share. I have no Twitter or Facebook or anything like that. Uh, yeah, I I just so for context to the only streamer or only Canadian in, in his twenties, um, evil um, asked me why I had the entire population of Canada on my podcast and not him yet, and I was like. Well, hey, I thought we were close personal friends, you know, I, just, I kind of felt played it. I'm not going to lie. Look, I, I, you know, I was just, like I said, I was just finding the right CPF to pair you up with. And I think I got a real doozy of one because I got the Susie. See, I made it rhyme because I'm, I'm smart wow. like that. I, what an yeah. introduction. Speaking of doozy Susie, Susie, Suzaloos, Suz, tell the, tell the people a little bit about yourself at, for what you want. You don't have to tell everybody all the information, but again. You know, look, you know, a little context of who you are as a as a person, what you do, stuff like that, shit like this and that. Okay, hi everyone. I'm Suze, also known as Suzy Luz, um, or Snoozy Suzy. You could call me that too. Um, I am a lawyer in the state of Utah, and. I don't know what else to tell you guys. Um, you can find me on Twitter. Um, it's S U double S double I double E B. Um, my Instagram is the same. I don't know. I'm excited to be here. This could be a good I'm not one. that interesting. I'm not that interesting. <laughs> I see. I'm pretty as, boring. As somebody who has heard you featured on many a podcast, <laughs> uh, the the depth of Suze's knowledge on just Everything is just like it oh, is stop. Well no, so so you've been on Splash Brothers Luncheon yes. uh, multiple times, uh talking about uh vindictive women uh of of like medieval times. Yes, um, I, that was our Valentine's Day special. <laughs> I remember that. Uh <laughs> yeah, talking about the medieval woman who killed men and stole their women. Uh, from from them, uh, she was an icon. For real. <laughs> she really was. Um, she's also like, been on This Is Cash. Uh, we we actually talked about your appearance on This Is Cash when uh, OXO and uh, Youngest were on. Oh, uh, I had that was fun. That was yeah. fun. Uh, Evil, on the other hand, I think this is Evil's first uh, CPF podcast. Right, this is your first CPF podcast you've been on. You can uh, catch my first appearance on the hit music podcast, Running Back the Hit, okay. with our pal, Lee and Are oh, you yeah. on this week? No, I was on uh, the Dill episode a few months ago. Oh, I don't think mm. I listened to that one. Don't tell Lee that. <laughs> <laughs> Lee won't fu- Here's the thing. Lee just emotes on, Lee just emotes on to my, like, like self-promo post, and he'll just be like, eh. Like, he just does the wrestling thing. That's it. 
and I appreciate that. That makes me like that's like all right, cool. Lee saw it. Uh, it's all right. I listen to Running Back the Hits. Uh, I, I wanted I listen- to speak. I, yeah, you're I know doing Lee that. was being super toxic on your episode. <laughs> he was. <laughs> he said he was going to get misogyny off, but you were you were in the, you were on the podcast, so <laughs> I can't believe it. <laughs> Lee, I think is... Alexa was in the same mindset too, because mm-hmm. he was like, "I'm going to say some things about women," and I was like, "Are yeah, you like oh, Alexa was a potster? <laughs> <laughs> Did you call him a putz?" <laughs> A pot stir. He, he oh, pot the stir. Pot. He is I a you... pot too. <laughs> <laughs> Can't believe Oh, so I was getting slammed. He'll never hear this though, so that's fine. Uh, <laughs> oh, absolutely not. No, I mean he. he you don't know. He's gonna be on. Uh, he's on uh, one of the December episodes, so he may get in a rhythm of listening. Who knows? Uh-huh. Um, but yeah. So today uh, we are here for some wrestling stuff. Now, what's fun is, I believe Suze, you told me you don't really know anything about wrestling. Um, so I watched wrestling very briefly mm, okay, um, when I was young, that. when I was a kid, um, my locker mate and I would watch WWE. Um, we were big Booker T fans. I couldn't tell you anything about him now, but we would actually <laughs> call each other up on the phone. Like this is aging me so badly. Like we would call each other's house phone mm-hmm. to like talk about what we just saw on TV. It's related to um, this. But we, we were young. This was, like, in fifth grade. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, and then I just kind of stopped watching it. Okay. I'm trying to think. It's probably... Yeah, I don't want to age you anymore. It's rude. You don't, you don't ask women about their age. You don't ask wrestlers about their pay. And uh, you don't but ask that's me. that's all I remember. <laughs> I remember just Booker T. That's literally Booker T. Like, that's all we <laughs> talked about. I don't Look. know why. Booker T. liked him so one of, much. <laughs> one of the greats. He does the spinner Rooney. He asks, can you dig it, sucker? Uh, some of the best, uh, the best, one of the best uh, intro, like, like entrance themes. Um, oh, wait. He, actually, I remember another wrestler. We didn't like him, though. The Undertaker. With, well, like, the one, <laughs> the one. Wait, is that right? The uh, one strap. Like, he looks no, kind no. of like a redneck. The one strap? Are you talking? Uh, no, no. The one strap was uh, the Big Show. Oh, maybe. Okay. I was gonna say you were right not to like the Undertaker because like, he's a piece of shit. Yeah. Uh, I remember. I like vaguely remember things. Yeah. Like I was gonna say, I'm like, well, if it's a tall person with one strap back then, it's probably the Big Show. But he was like fat, right? Yeah, he was chunky. Yeah, he was. I mean, he was seven feet tall, five hundred pounds. He was kind of okay. Was, wait, yeah. let me. Let me Google what the Undertaker <laughs> looks like. Yeah, the under the Undertaker. One of two things: he looks like a dirtbag biker, or a or um like a. Yes. Okay, I remember both of them. <laughs> okay. But okay. see, like I don't remember like plot lines or anything. I'm the only person. I, it's who just ever very does. vague. I really actually have like. <laughs> this is gonna sound so wrong. A lot of my memories from that time, like that age, are very like vague. Hmm. Well, if that makes sense, like no, that makes sense. Yeah, like if like I I understand that because there's other fit like it's like wrestling for me is very clear, but there are things where I'm like, yeah, I watched that when I was a younger, and I'm like, I couldn't tell you anything about it, but sure, yeah, I could definitely tell you about this. You know, like meanwhile, yeah, it's like, like I can't, I, yeah, I can't tell you like a lot about it. I just remember we would watch it weekly and then talk about it. Yeah. Meanwhile, on the I, could, phone. <laughs> I could tell you. What happened today? What happened twenty years ago on a random SmackDown uh, on UPN? Like, it's like it's just clear, it's still clear as day. Uh, I'm a sicko for this shit. Uh, Evil, are you a sicko for this wrestling shit? Uh, I have a little bit of a history with wrestling. I don't follow it any. I haven't followed it for a long time now. But uh, first, I'm from Calgary, so as Grum has explained on previous episodes, that's the home of Stampede Wrestling and, like, the Hart Brothers, stuff like that. So wrestling was always really big when I was a kid. Like, some of my earliest memories, uh, my older brother's got, like, 10 years on me, so, like, some of my earliest memories, I remember watching WCW Thunder with him just sitting mm-hmm. on the floor, chilling out. But uh, I watched wrestling mainly, What is what is the era called right after Attitude, the superstar the, era? The Ruthless Aggression era. 
Ruthless Aggression Era. Yeah. So when I was watching wrestling, we mainly watched Raw. Okay. I wasn't a big SmackDown guy. Raw was more our thing. Like so, uh, big wrestlers at the time that I was watching: Brock Lesnar, Triple H. Those were like the two big ones for their brands. Mm-hmm. Uh, some of the storylines, like I was thinking back to, like I remember the first brand draft. Remember how that oh, went? Because I remember yeah. Raw. Bro- uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Raw picked Brock Lesnar first, right? And then SmackDown picked Triple H. And I remember getting super excited because I hated Triple H. And I was like, all right, get him up out of here. But then Paul Heyman comes out like halfway through and starts waving around Brock's contract saying that he has to stay at SmackDown. Yeah, there was something, it was something like that. Uh, so uh, it's like, it's not at the start, but it's like, it's early in the show where like, Eric Bischoff's like, yeah, I'm gonna take, I'm gonna take uh, Brock Lesnar, and, and uh, like, for some reason, I think, I think it was just like the fact that Monday, I forget like what the, I no, no, it was that Triple H didn't want to go to to uh, SmackDown. He wanted to be on Raw because that's the A sh- A show. He's the A, the game, blah 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 blah. So it's like one of those ones like you had two guys who were upset. Let's. It was basically a Kyrie for Ben Simmons, like you know. <laughs> Like, hey, your problem for my problem? Cool. Like, <laughs> I'll deal with your problem. Your problem seems more uh, enjoyable. Uh, I think it was something yeah, along cool. those lines. I, I also remember that draft. Um, uh, Stone Cold did not want to be on Raw. Oh, no, no, I'm thinking of the very original one because he didn't want to be on Raw because of Ric Flair. And uh, Ric Flair is like, fuck you, and drafted him anyways. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> it's like fuck you! I don't give a fuck. I'm drafting this guy. He's really good. He's he's the goat. Uh, it makes you always yeah, think about like if uh, if any like the pro leagues ever did a fantasy draft, like just re- shake up the entire league. Yeah, and then uh, so I was thinking back some other yeah. things there. Like I remember uh, first elimination chamber. I remember Kane's unmasking evolution unmasked Kane and they had like all that fake prosthetic on him to make him look like a monster or something. Mm-hmm. Uh yeah. I remember we uh we did not buy pay per views. They were a little bit too expensive, but we did buy WrestleMania like three or four times. So I remember WrestleMania thirty, I believe, when Undertaker comes back as the dead man. Uh I think Eddie Guerrero beats Brock Lesnar for the championship that one. That was and uh, then there's the here's the sicko shit. Uh, it's t- WrestleMania 20. <laughs> WrestleMania 20. Sorry, sorry. WrestleMania, yes, 20. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 20. And uh, the month prior to it is when Eddie Guerrero defeated Brock Lesnar in San Francisco with uh, some aid from Goldberg. Okay, yeah. Because I, I, I remember there's a tri- <laughs> uh, triple threat match. It's Triple H, Schmish uh, and Yeah, Schmish <laughs> And Shawn Michaels and... Uh, I remember Chris Benoit, he ends up winning the heavyweight championship at that time, and Eddie comes out with him, and they have yeah. a nice big celebration. Yeah. That's the one thing, like, uh, the, like, if you, like, the, the, it's, it's several tiers below the actual heinous acts that, like, Chris Benoit's, like, final, like, couple days of being alive, like, m- murdering his wife and child, and then, him, and then taking his own life because he's a fucking coward. Um, and then, like, several layers down is like the fact that like that moment is forever ruined because like yeah my like my nostalgia is like oh that i remember watching that like that brought a tear to my eye as a as a 12 year old like hell yeah these two guys who are best friends and you know been told that they can't do this shit they're on top of the world they're hugging they're embracing and it's like you know three years later oh they're yeah, both we, dead. we were pumped, right? Like Chris, yeah. Chris Benoit's from Edmonton. He trained in Calgary. Like he was one of my favorite wrestlers growing up. So that yeah. sucked. Yeah, not fun. Not fun. Um, but yeah, and then uh, a lot of what uh, growing up too uh, was the video games for us. Mm. So me and my brothers and my cousin, we played the shit out of the PlayStation SmackDown games. Uh, especially if when we get to PS2, like SmackDown, bring it on SmackDown. Here comes the pain. Shut your mouth. Like mm-hmm. we put insane amount of hours in those games. Yeah, I wish I had those games growing up. There's, we had so much fun. I've said this on the podcast. They're so much fun. Like 
I, even if you I don't play like, video games, they're fun. I feel like my sisters and I would have loved to get aggression out on each other that way. <laughs> yeah. And uh, the cre- creator wrestler feature, like, we, that was just a blast, just creating just random fucking wrestlers all day. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, I mean, I still do it f- for uh, Grummas season. Like, it's just fun to be like, hey, give me a name. Give me a random name. I'm going to figure out what the wrestler looks like based on the name. And they're like, oh, well, what about the giant sh- uh, shark pie man? And I'm like, all right, I figured it out. Here, Here's what they look like. That, that does look like the giant shark pie man. And I just threw random words at you. Glad that worked out for you, though. We had a, we had a tag team that always made an appearance. It would be the Unholy Alliance. So it would be Satan and Jesus are a tag team together. <laughs> Satan's super easy to make as a creator wrestler. Just just turn him red, make yeah. him eight feet tall, and give him like whatever mixture of Undertaker and Kane's moves. Uh, <laughs> Jesus was a little bit tougher. So Jesus was extreme Jesus. He had a rainbow wizard hat on, and all of his all his moves and taunts and, uh, were uh, like a mixture of Val Venus and Scotty Too Hotty. Like, I remember his signature was the one. <laughs> Evil, if, 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 uh, if, if the religious types could sell us that Jesus was, in fact, that your Jesus, then I think, they, I think they'd be doing a lot better PR-wise at the very least. Uh, that well, is... <laughs> extreme, extreme Jesus was extreme fun. Yeah. Uh... But yeah, like I, I, the, there's like so much fun. And yeah, like kind of what you said, Zeus is like, it, it was a weird like outlet for some aggression because if you were just had a bad day, I, you just turn on, turn the game on, beat up your least favorite wrestler for fucking 45 minutes. <laughs> Similar like with like Grand Theft Auto, but like, I don't know, it's less, less, uh, less violent somehow. What's crazy is like we weren't allowed like any violent games at our house but we did have like we played like baseball Mm. ml like mlb 2k5 but we would like try to like run into each other's players on that to let out aggression (laughs) like running home like we always had like collisions at home plate um in part because my sister just did not know how to play um but yeah, I wish we had more like fighting games like that. Like wrestling would have been cool. Instead, we just was... wrestled in real life on our gymnastics <laughs> mats. Um, oh yeah, I was. I had two brothers and my cousin there, so we were doing a lot of the wrestling in real life too. Yeah, I, I was the older brother, so I beat up my younger brother. I'd be like, "Oh hey, like I want to do the choke slam. Like let me look, come here," and he'd be like, "Okay, yeah, sure." And just start... oh yeah, like my brother oh, and fr- cousin were oh. way bigger than us, so. <laughs> They, they were missed... just tossing us around. Did they ever, quote-unquote, miss the bed? Oh, dude, my cousin <laughs> fucking... He powerbombed me through the couch. The couch <laughs> breaks. My mom is asleep upstairs. And, like, the couch makes this loud fucking snapping sound. We all go quiet. And all you hear is her footsteps banging up the floor coming downstairs. We all just bailed the fuck out. Like, we're like, no way are we going to be here when she finds this shit. She was so fucking mad. <laughs> oh my gosh. Here I am. Like, like yeah, that's better the couch and the thing just split in half. I I mean I've done that, just not to the extreme of like a power bomb. Like it's like a like lift and like throw, like with like a younger cousin or something. Like throw me, throw me. And it's like no, we're not in a pool. Like, no, 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 throw me on the couch, throw me on the couch. It's like, all right, fine, here you go. And you know, just you eat them over across the living room. And then you hear a crack and you're like, we're done. No more throwing. <laughs> uh, but yeah, <laughs> just power <laughs> Just getting jackknife power bombs. <laughs> yeah, they had to buy a new living room for that after. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, did they, they probably went the full extreme. Like, you got to buy us a whole new furniture set. Like, not just the couch. Yep. Couch, yep. Had to replace the in. couch and the love seat and the chair. Yeah. <laughs> It's always how it is. Uh, wait, real quick. Hold on. Did they get a... Uh, wait, is it a... Is it a uh, hold on. There's a Canadian t- term for a couch. I don't... It's like West... It's not a Westchester, is it? A uh, uh, Westchester field or something like yeah, that? Yeah, 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 I, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I vaguely know what you're talking about. Yeah, it's like one of those like older slang. I know this because I have a friend who is, you know, a little older in Canada 
So like she's she's like yeah I have the, I have the Westminster Chester Shire thing and I'm like the fuck it's like oh it's a couch I'm like oh is it a brand well no not this one but it's just slang and I'm like I guess that makes sense because like if you ask for a Kleenex people all know you want a tissue whether it's an actual Kleenex or not um or even saying Kleenex when you mean a paper towel uh at least in my house that's what it is but also in my house. Um, is uh, actually has nothing to do with what we're talking about, and that's a bad segue. Uh, I do have a couple questions before we talk about the. Uh, <laughs> uh, that was a terrible. Segue. Terrible. Look, it was a terrible segue. I'm like, I had these. I had one of three ways to go with it, and I just was like, no, I'm going on the fourth. I'm creating a fourth. Uh, so before we get into what we're going to talk about, I do want to ask. You know, one or two, you know, little contextual questions. I know Evil knows how this works because Evil's uh, constantly tagging me on Monday afternoon, going like, "Oh, like humanity, Mick, lol," and I'm like, <laughs> "Yeah, humanity." But e- Evil just picks out like one one phrase. He's just like fat scrubs all the way over to like an hour seventeen, and he's like, "All right, I'm gonna." Yeah, right. yeah, no. At, I'm listening. I I did the homework. I did see. I watched the no, show. No, sir. I I, I am a dork size super fan. I remember when this was a segment on another podcast. That's how long I've been listening. Yeah, the fun report. I feel bad that I haven't. There's only so much to listen to, up. and if it's like, don't don't feel bad, Suze. And I I say this to everybody who's like, oh, I feel bad. I don't watch it. Like I don't listen to your podcast from behind. I'm like. Are you upset that you're also behind on some other podcasts? Like, do you do you message like th- those hosts, or just because you know me? Like, you like shit happens. Like, I'm you know. Also, it's a very niche thing. Like, I I've cracked but the code. Like, I I have I, listened to Grapple Guys. Well, that's different because Jim Jam be acting a goddamn fool twenty four seven. Like, honestly, to be honest, I don't remember any discussion about wrestling at all from Grapple Guys. <laughs> it's never Can I no. mean that in the nicest way. Yeah, no. It's, it's usually never... just Jim Jam arguing about something. <laughs> no, that's the I best like... bit where it's like, did you guys watch Raw on Monday? No, no, no. Okay, we can move on. Yeah. It's uh and the best thing about it is it's their uh their like tagline is like a wrestling podcast for people who actually like wrestling and they don't watch any wrestling anymore. It's just <laughs> they, don't, they don't watch <laughs> they don't watch Raw, they don't watch NXT, they barely watch Dynamite, they watch SmackDown. That's it. Like <laughs> Like they were just yelling about uh, like the the pilot versus uh, pro wrestler argument is just wild. Legendary. Oh my it's, gosh, I remember that. Like right now in America, <laughs> in the world, not just America, in the world, there's a shortage on pilots. If it was easy to become a pilot, there would not be a shortage on pilots. All right, that's what I'm. That's all I'm saying. Um, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> the contextual questions. <laughs> Uh, shout out Jim Jam, uh, Aaron and, uh, and, uh, Broads, uh, all former Dorkside, uh, guests. Um, but no, so some contextual questions. I, I just want to ask like one or two, uh, because what we're going to watch is kind of long and also we don't have as much time as normal, but that's more on my part than anybody else's. Well, it's so, my, my fault, but... No, no, no. I'm the one who bumped it up. Otherwise, you know, I was, but, um, but said what are some of your your guys's favorite like after school snacks like i'm talking like the tasty cakes or like the thing that your your parents would pack into your lunch as a special treat and you're like cosmic brownies fuck yes oh yeah that's easy dunkaroos Dunkaroos. do you guys have dunkaroos yes Okay. All right. Yeah. Dunkaroos. Uh, yeah. If I had some Dunkaroos in the lunch bag, that that was a good day. What about you, Suze? Oh my gosh. I'm so jealous. My mom like did not let us eat that kind of stuff. Ah, uh, boo. My mom was like the worst. I was talking about this today at work. Like we weren't allowed like sugary ce- cereal as kids. Uh, so no, I always felt bad like, for that kid. We couldn't have Lucky Charms or like tricks or Fruit Loops because my mom was like, it's so bad for you. So, like, after school snack, well, I always had, like, sometimes my mom would let us get Gushers. Ooh, that was gushers a good after good. school snack, but she rarely did. Um, yeah. There's, like, those oatmeal pies. 
and like oh, this, like these are yeah. these are like afternoon after school snacks that I ate as an adult, like in college, <laughs> like zebra the cakes. oatmeal pies, the zebra cakes, yeah. the Christmas tree ones. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I'm very close to my thirties and still buying fruit gushers. So <laughs> yeah, I don't like, feel bad at all. While, but now I kind of want to buy some like Oreos. <laughs> my mom hid the Oreos from us too as kids because yeah. she claimed they were my dad's. <laughs> but they were hers, or weren't they? She- no, they were my dad's, but like she hid them and she would put them in like um, oh, okay. cabinets I couldn't reach because I'm only five feet tall. <laughs> um. okay, you, you get it? See that? So I, I never like. There's like I, I got to a height. I, I, like I'm six two. I got to a height that was as a younger. My mom's like, I can't hide that shit like that way. So we were, she started hiding things down. Like underneath the sink, because I wouldn't go looking for it under the sink, and then I well, didn't realize. Like, it's just funny that like what, the inverse. That's what's so backwards is like my parents kept all of their liquor on like the bottom shelf of <laughs> our pantry. If they would have just, <laughs> it was just ju- there. No, we had like because bo- my dad would get like free bottles of like Grey Goose vodka. For work, and it was we just have liquor everywhere on the bottom shelf, so I could access that, but I couldn't access Oreos. <laughs> Priorities, <you know? laughs> well, the Oreos are a treat. Taught you to taught you to taught like that inadvertently teaching you the the value of supply and demand, and thus seeing a whole bunch of having alcohol at a surplus made you not want to actually have it. Psych. Uh, that, yeah, that, that, that's not how that works. <laughs> I don't. Yeah, I don't know. My mom was crazy. Uh, but yeah, zebra cakes are goaded. Uh, um, the cosmic brownies, cosmic brownies were like the, like the readily always were there. Like people, I don't, I feel like not enough people actually liked, or they liked everything so much more than cosmic brownies, but cosmic brownies were still like a solid A, like everything else was like A plus. Um, what is the cosmic brownie again? Is that the one that has like skit or like M and M's and so like, it's it's a it's like the. On? Yeah, it's got like the rainbow, like thick sprinkles, like maybe like a, like cho- I think they're like chocolate filled sprinkles or pe- pieces, um, and it's like one or two per per square, but it doesn't matter because it's <laughs> you know it's just, you're just happy to see it, an old friend. Oatmeal cream pies are great, although they Those have are to, so good. But it's the fact that they still haven't changed the name, like I know the name is a little. <laughs> Like I understand, majority of people are not going to associate oatmeal cream pies with anything other than oatmeal cream pies. However, there is a <laughs> there's a sizable population of people in in the in the society that we live in that 100 percent hear cream pie and have. A, w- calm down, Jim Jam. Hear do- yeah, something it's completely it's different. I feel like 100 percent of those people are CPFs. A hundred percent of them. We had pie talk today this yeah. morning. Yep. And all I said was pie talk question mark. <laughs> and then everyone got mad at me. <laughs> and I said, why can't I just like pie? <laughs> like what makes you think I'm not just excited about apple pie? Note to self, I have to next time Suze is on, we're gonna watch some uh, the rock just talking about pie. That's it. <laughs> of the Rock talking about pie. Uh, <laughs> so Sue's gonna be like, I just feel like I'm in the CPF chat. That's all. The Rock's a close yeah. personal friend. That's it. Um. Well, the reason why I bring up um the uh the the after school snack and treat. What we're gonna watch today is from 2006. It is from oh Raw. It is the trial. Of Eric Bischoff. Now, I did pick this because Suze is a lawyer. Thus, it'd be fun to have a lawyer watch a, a comedic trial in the scope of professional wrestling. Oh my gosh, I am so excited. But in this... in this, uh, So this, this happened over the course of the entire night of Raw. For all two hours. Where Eric Bischoff's job was on the line. He, I think he lost like a Survivor Series match. And basically, like, you know... You might get fired if you lose if your team loses a Survivor Series match. And he was like kind of like, "No, Mr. McMahon, please don't fire me." Um it is over the top. It is hilarious. McFoley is the prosecutor. Um 
And he gets excited when they call for recess, and uh, he sees what his mother packed for him in his lunch. Uh, so I, I won't spoil that for the two of you. Wait, we'll watch that. Grum, before we watch it, yes. what if I saw this when I was young and it subconsciously made me want to be a lawyer? Well... That would I mean, be fucking hilarious. It's it's possible, and that'd be hilarious. And if if that's the case, we're gonna find out. And if you do, then the people are gonna find that out on the Patreon. That's support.grum.tv. You can watch that at some point in the, in the future, uh, probably like March or April. I'm not sure. I'm like a couple months, several months behind. But anyways, um, yeah, uh, we'll be right back here. It's a it is a YouTube clip that has all the segments. I will put it in the description, so don't worry about finding it on the Peacock Network. You just sit back as a listener, click on that link, and you can watch it, then come back, or just meet us on the other side. We'll be right back here on the Dork Side of the Ring podcast. Mm, yeah, brother, it's a macho bro. You're here to tell you... Go to grum.tv and support.grum.tv. Dot, dot, dot. Oh, oh, yeah, no pausing here. Got a minute 30 to get it all out. Then we got the Patreon at support.grum.tv. All new content updated weekly. Weekly, twice maybe even weekly. Who knows? We got grum.tv, the Discord, where the live streams are happening. Go over also to T Grum's YouTube. Yeah, that's right. T Grum's YouTube. I don't know the link because you don't have a, you don't have a nice little custom one, but if you help me out here. Go in the link in the description of this podcast and go ahead and hit that subscribe inside that page. Yeah, why? Because of some dork side stuff. We'll get there this year, uh huh? If we get enough, so we can get a nice little custom URL, uh huh? Support.grum.tv and grum.tv. Yeah, for all your good dork side and dork side related content. I'm the Macho Grum, and I'm telling you, you can watch the yellow if you don't uh, Support.grum.tv. Yeah, dig it. I'd be like, oh, my client's in the garbage truck again. Like, shoot. <laughs> I don't care. I, it's not yeah. me in it. Is that, <laughs> is that mean? No. 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 Uh, so, the, uh, so that was that was the trial. Uh, we don't have too much time, but I do want to get at least about like a half hour here. So, uh, it is uh, takeaways from the trial of Eric Bischoff. Uh, being a lawyer sucks in the WWE universe. <laughs> I don't know how I'm supposed to build a case with all these weird witnesses and surprise John Cena's. <laughs> right? <laughs> Just fucking uh, calling every... Uh, I feel like, let's see, they called the def- they, they called what? Chris Masters, Simon Dean. Yeah, no, two of the people, and, and Davari, but... They're like one out of their three uh, witnesses that the defense called either didn't show up or got disqualified for um, using the wrong name. Which Sue's being the expert lawyer said. Opposite reaction. Like, I think it'd be more fun to be a lawyer in this universe (laughs) because there's like a flare of excitement. This is true. Yes, I was going to say, Suze, what about you? Do you agree? <laughs> but you answered it. Uh, Suze, as the, as, the, as the legal expert, um, he, did you find that that was a professional court? Uh, or was there a lot, to, lot that they probably should have, you know, done It was very, ina- very inaccurate. Okay. On basically every level. I mean, Vince could not be a judge in that circumstance. Um, the questions were all leading questions, which you're not really allowed to do on direct examination. The bailiff was way too hot. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Bailiff's I mean, body was too distracting. Oh, and then, like, the client gives the closing argument. I mean, that would never, <laughs> never happen. So you're well, telling I mean, me, if you're, wait, you're, if I it's thought... the defendant, like, Tajiri comes in. And they call him as a witness. All he was there to do is say, like, hey, Eric Bischoff sucks. I'd be like, what kind of witness is this? Like, what, what, what am I supposed to do with that? Well, so, like, in court cases, you actually can have, like, a hostile witness to your own side. Which is really, it's unusual. But 
And it usually happens when the witness like lies. So you think the witness is going to say something good for your case. And then they're suddenly like changing their story and then they become a hostile witness. Is that when you go permission to treat the witness as hostile? Like, is that? Yes. Okay. And then you can like ask. So like normally if it's your own witness, you can only, you can't ask leading questions. Right. Okay. So you usually have to ask like open ended questions like, what did you do that day? Mm. What did you have for lunch? You can't ask like, um, you had soup for lunch, correct? Because that's considered a leading question because you're giving them the answer. Mm. But once someone is your hostile witness, then you can actually ask them leading questions. Did you or did you not send those men to die? Right. And then you get the few good men. That that was what this thing was missing, was missing the, the few good men. Yeah, it was. Uh <laughs> just the, your it really God, was. Did you kiss the, did you kiss my daughter? You're goddamn right I did. <laughs> but a few good men didn't have John Cena. Uh this is true. <laughs> However, Suze, uh I will say this this is a future dork side um topic. WrestleMania 21, uh, so the WrestleMania of that year that we saw uh, was in Hollywood, and they did a whole bunch of spoofs of oh. famous movies. So they did one of like of a uh, uh, taxi driver. They did one with uh, they did one with a Dirty Harry. They did when Harry met Sally. They did Pulp Fiction, Spartacus. Um, I'm trying to remember what the other ones. Forrest Gump. They did one, um, but they did one with John Cena as Tom Cruise in A Fo- Few Good Men. Wow. So he's like basically accusing his WrestleMania opponent of cheating. And he's like, yeah, you're goddamn right I did. Because I'm the one who's, and it's, it's actually very, like, it's, with them going back to WrestleMania in a couple of years, I want them to redo that. Because it was, such a, it was such a nice concept where it's like, hey, we'll just, oh, and they did Braveheart. Uh, as well that was one that they did um but yeah the uh <laughs> but if they and you know you're right few good men now but if you combine them now i think you got to hit few good men too yeah yeah i really like that idea right. i would watch that movie we'll send it to wwe here we're just going to continue we need sending. to work in the bailiff too somehow you want <laughs> you want all right we'll work we'll, we'll get we'll get Chris but Matthews. not the boogeyman guy or the worm guy whatever <laughs> that is yeah okay so out of the movie out so the the trial begins in front of the crowd introducing who the prosecutor McFoley and the defendant the defense attorney Jonathan Coachman uh to be uh, and then they go to like North Charleston courthouse, and it's empty except for Vince, Eric Bischoff, Mick Foley, and Jonathan Coachman. Um, and the first witness that they call is Stephanie McMahon, who walks in and gives these sultry as fuck eyes to just to the camera. <laughs> Sue's thought they were giving it to her dad. Uh, <laughs> I mean, she might be. I, I mean. If I told you that Vince McMahon at one time p- pitched while his his only daughter was pregnant a storyline in which he was the father of her child. What? Okay, so yeah, you wouldn't okay. believe it. Yeah. <laughs> See, I knew I wasn't that off. She walked in trying to seduce the judge, which is her dad. But her yeah. dad's like into that. <laughs> No. <laughs> Isn't that not what you just told me? <laughs> no, all right. So Stephanie McMahon took some time off because she wanted to be a mom. So she was taking a, a, a backseat away from being on camera. Okay, at that's one, fair. At one point during her preg- one of her two pregnancies, she or she was pregnant three times, but it was one of the first two. She they were just talking about ideas and Vince for whatever reason apparently pitched an incest angle to her like oh we should you're pregnant like you know cuz at the time he's doing this he's he's in the middle of this own story where he's like power crazy going on like he's feuding with god uh, at this point like they're just, he's unhinged <laughs> and uh 
<laughs> yeah, I say in, that. In in doing in part of him being unhinged, uh, they did the story where uh, he was like, "What if I'm you know? What if I'm actually the like basically like what if it was me who impregnated you?" Wait, but okay, but why would that even cross his mind? Unless Vin- he was kind of into that. Vince McMahon is a, is a weird fucking guy. Uh, oh my goodness! Like there have to be certain events that happen for you to be the father <laughs> of your daughter's child. Correct. Yes. It's not something uh, this- that, like accidentally happens. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> I see. This has actually been brought up on Dorkside a few times, and it's like, with that storyline being pitched, and your Triple H in the room sitting there, how do you even respond to that? Where it's like, you, I'm sorry, you want to do an <laughs> incest story with my wife slash your daughter about my new child? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Wait. So you, my father-in-law, want to ha- want to suggest that you had sex with your daughter, my wife, and sired your grandchild, my child, your child? What the fuck? Yeah, no, that's where I'm like, I'm throwing hands with my father-in-law. I don't care. Uh, so I don't like, I don't buy it as a serious thing. I, but just to throw it out there in general, I'm, I'm sure somebody had suggested it and Vince was like, ha ha, that's funny. Ha ha, I'll, I'll suggest it to Steph. Ha 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 ha, pal. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Vince McMahon, f- fucking weird dude. Weird. Doesn't like people sneezing around him. I've heard that. Not I because, did know that. Do you know? Did, did you hear the reason why? Oh, I'm trying to think. I've heard that on a different podcast. I used to listen to Crime and Sports, and mm, they had okay. a lot of wrestlers on there. Yeah. Um, yeah. Vince does not like sneezing, and because. Oh wait! I think I know this. Um, right? it, it, it's because you're showing a lack of control, right? Correct. If you can't control he's your, so crazy. If he you thinks sne- he can be the the father of his daughter, like, <laughs> <laughs> people, uh, control he, of natural impulses. You okay. also you also can't finish your meal before he finishes his. Um, if you <laughs> because it, like, like I don't know. I think it's like some. I think it's like some combo of like. Showing that you have self control over your body slash respect for him slash like being a better eater than him. <laughs> um, yeah, it's like it's he's a weird fucking dude, but it's one of those like this makes sense to him being weird because these older people in entertainment had to be fucked up to be putting up some of this some of the shit that we just love. Like, I'm sure at some hey, point. Wait. I have a question. Go ahead. I'm sorry to interrupt. Would you rather have him as your father-in-law or that boogeyman worm guy? Uh, Marty Wright, the real the real human being behind it, is a fascinating human. But Vince McMahon, I'd rather have as my father-in-law. Interesting. Yeah, I'll take Vince. So Marty Wright, there was a they, WWE had a reality TV show called Tough Enough concept is are you tough enough to become a pro wrestler um after it ran it ran on mtv for a couple years and then it went away and they brought it back in like 2006 or 7 and they had open tryouts on like santa monica beach he shows up there now they were seeking younger people around the ages of like you know 18 to like 26 ideally you know so they can train spend a couple years training you and then get you right out in front of people and he told them that he was 27 he was actually 42 oh my gosh (laughs) but the thing is he went there and he was physically the best guy there from in shape to like cardio like he's out working these like gym rats and bodybuilders and and former athletes like he's putting in the work but they're like look you lied to us so we're going to disqualify you. And, like, he apparently, like, walked away from the... He was walked away he, undeterred. He's like, all right, well, yeah, I'm, I'm going to be a WWE superstar. I understand. Like, I'm going to. And, basically, he walked it walked away from the set. And they were like, all right, hey, well, let's get you a, let's get you a contract. <laughs> like, they're like... Oh, my gosh. Because he's like... They're like, holy shit, this is, like... 
it's one of those like, look, I'm just gonna do it. Fuck it. I don't care. They're not gonna care. It's not a crime to lie about my age. Um, but he ends up like becoming the boogeyman as that character, and it's uh, for a while it is one of the most interesting presentations that WWE has put out because it's like this guy is in. He's eating real fucking worms. He's smashing alarm clocks over his head. He's, like, doing his own makeup. Like, the char- character, it was all made up from himself. Like, he's like, I got the concept for the boogeyman. He, like, shows I mean, up. I mean, that's know- cool, but it's creepy. Which is, I mean, the, <laughs> which is the, intended, the intended thing. He's like, well, what the fuck is wrong with this guy? But, uh, yeah, he's, uh, he's like, what, genuinely a good dude. Um, just, like, I, there's a part of his mind that he just puts in a corner of his mind, and he goes there to become the boogeyman and then he's able to walk free. I don't understand how, but more power to him. But yeah, I'm taking Vince as my as my father in law. Ten times out of ten. Um That's fair. So, so Stephanie's there, she brings up the time when he when Eric Bischoff pretended to be uh Vince if for Halloween and to make out with her. Because Vince would dress up as Vince. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I don't think I think it makes so. Perfect sense. If I remember, the, if I remember the segment correctly, she doesn't know who she knows. It's not Vince, but she doesn't know who's underneath the thing. And then that, when it's revealed that it's Eric Bischoff, she's like taken aback, and she's like, "You son of a bitch!" Because at the time they're trying to sign, I believe it was Triple H. They were both trying to sign to their respective um, either either Triple H or Scott Steiner. I forget which one. And uh, they were trying to basically get them on their show, and like he had been like, "No, nah, no, nah, she's a woman. You don't want to. You don't want to. You don't want to be in a. She, she, she could be fine one week, and the next week she'd be mad at you. You know, like real misogynistic bullshit." Uh, also, at the time, uh, Eric Bischoff had hot lesbian action as a um, draw to Raw. Oh, yeah, um, the post Attitude Era. Like, directly after the Attitude Era, like, ended is a weird fucking time. Because um, they're, like, still doing the the overly sexy, like, bra and panty matches and mud wrestling matches that, like, the 90s, the late 90s loved. But also, it's just, like, um, we have the internet now. If we wanted to stare at boobs, we can. We don't have to turn on the TV to stare at boobs anymore. Yeah. Um... <laughs> like it's like stupid old <laughs> yeah and it's just like it's also the thing is like you have like some really good wrestling like most of it is like more that's a little bit of it most of it's like look you got some really good women wrestlers why are you just putting on random hot women to just kiss each other what um but 2002 different time girls kissing girls you know girls gone wild it was a thing Terrible thing, though. But it was a thing, nonetheless. Um, yeah, where was it? Uh, uh, yes. What? Oh, I was just going to say, we've got the, the old Spike infomercials that would just oh. run from, like, 1 a.m. to 4 a.m. every single night. Yeah. yeah. Uh, some wild times. Um, the, uh, the other, like... Like, WWE got it, like, they did a paper, they were, like, Girls Gone Wild actually had a pay-per-view one time, and WWE sent some of their women talent and some of their men to be a part of it. And I'm just like, like, in hindsight, it's, like, wild that they were like, yeah, no, 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 let's, let's associate our product with this product. But... Uh, I mean, wrestling's never been too picky or choosy about who they associate with. I mean, nowadays they are. WWE doesn't, like, you know. Well, I guess not necessarily. Oh, yeah. yeah. Modern wrestling is a lot more cleaned up, yeah. Yeah. I was going to say, but then they ended up going to Rolling Loud, which Rolling Loud in and of itself is not. But the idea that you're going to tell people that you're going to Rolling Loud and when people go, what's that? And then Google what Rolling Loud is. and the the, The festival itself will show up and then Rolling Loud will come up with a different, an entirely different definition about two or three, you know, search for, you know, two or three uh, items underneath the initial festival report. Uh, so, um, I don't know. I remember explaining to somebody what Rolling Loud was. And then they asked me why it was called Rolling Loud. 
they didn't understand it. I was like, well, that's uh, <laughs> unfortunate for you. Um, so the trial continues. Stephanie Man leaves. Um, the next person that's called to the stand it, or is Tajiri, who um, has a translator, but then he tells Eric Bischoff that he hopes he gets fired, and then Bischoff goes like, all right, well, he's t- let him know that he's going to wrestle Triple H later tonight. And, um, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Suze, let, let me ask you that. With Tajiri, the prosecution cannot just call a witness to, and their whole the witness is basically just there to be like, yeah, that dude sucks. I hate him. It's like, you, you can't do that. What is that? So there's like all... Oh my gosh, I feel like I'm back in law school. It's, I mean, <laughs> um, so there's actually a lot of rules on character testimony you can provide um, during a trial. Like There's all types of rules on um, character traits and what you can say about the defendant in a criminal case, for example. Um, but usually if the defendant himself brings something up and is like, no, actually I'm a really honest person, right? If the defendant is making that argument, then the other side can bring witnesses in to challenge that. Oh, I but see. it's kind of like you have to it has like the door has to be opened first. Um, but usually also like the truthfulness of the witness is only relevant if it's like a case related to being truthful. Um, there's so many rules. It's really complicated. So yeah, you can't just go to trial and just shit on the witnesses. <laughs> like, I know that's like your first instinct. But, like, you can't. Your Honor, this motherfucker is lying. He is lying. I can t- like, can you imagine what I would say about Lee if we have like, <laughs> <laughs> like just picture it. Like, you oh can't do gosh. that. Like, oh, wait, are wait, you, are you the, are you cross-examining Lee? Or no, are I'm you, the witness. Oh, I'm you're, the oh, witness. boy. Oh, boy. <laughs> Your Honor, I call S- S- Suze to the stand. <gasps> Uh, and Lee just, Lee. Lee's just like, here she goes. <laughs> I'm gonna get out. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, what? He does it. I'm like, all right, I'm gonna head out. The bailiff is just standing there going, mm mm. No. no, he's like, I think I'm gonna go get lunch. <laughs> um, but yeah, there's so many rules. Like, you can't, like, you can't talk about certain things unless it's like a mode, like a common motive. Mm. There's just so many things. Like, even if someone's been like arrested before and they're a defendant, like the prosecution can't always bring that up. It has to be within like a certain time frame. It has to be related to the actual crime. There's so many rules. No, I know this from movies that the judge is going to ask relevancy. Mm. Yeah. I mean, yeah, to some extent, it's not relevant either. Can you, I, like, can you just like, Vince McMahon is clearly definitely not a judge. Like, he's not a professionally trained judge. <laughs> yeah, I guess we have to keep that in context here. <laughs> like, I mean, to be fair, uh, he did he did immediately call out... Uh, he Like, like he could have let the perjury happen, you know? Um, I'm pretty sure Chris Masters would have perjured himself uh, right out the gate when they're like, could you state your name? He's like, Chris Masters. And if Vince didn't go, like, no, 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 this motherfucker's name is not Chris Masters. It's Chris Motowetsky, and he's disqualified. Um, I feel like they would have just lost outright then and there because uh, he would have, you know, perjured himself. Is that perjury if you don't give – like, like? so I have, a, I have my government name, but then I go by a nickname, which is, like, initialed. I mean, it is perjury, but I don't, it wouldn't affect a trial because he's not perjuring himself. Well, okay. On the one hand, like, it's not going to affect the trial too much because he's perjuring himself on something so irrelevant to the actual trial, right? Like, his name doesn't matter. But it does show that he's an untruthful witness. Mm. So a Wait, good attorney so- would be like, well, he didn't even tell you the truth about his name. So why should you believe him about anything else he says? Like that's what how it would go. Hmm. So at the trial, uh, CPF trial of Lee, are we supposed to use the CPF handles or our real names? <laughs> I don't know. See, I, see, I'm covered, right? Like, I'm good like that. I, I ha- I'm covered. Like I use it. 
I, both both suffice. So I'll be all right either way. Um, <laughs> I'm just envisioning a Lee trial, and I just me in the background going like shaking my head. I can't believe that they they got my guy like this. And then like by the end of it, I, I'm yelling, "Lock him up! Lock him up! Lock him!" Up. Can't believe Lee. By the way, this 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 is like for seven people, and of those seven people, two of them are going to hear this. But this motherfucker was today in the chat talking about how he's not horny, and that you know he's like these horny people need to be locked up. Yeah, I saw that. And I'm like, excuse me, these are the people you're in a call with late at night. You know, like out here saying that you Sue's Jim Jam need to be locked up. Uh, that's some bullshit, if I've ever fucking seen it. He said, not me. He, uh, he said, I'm not in those calls. I keep it clean. Well, he's lying a lot in the chat, so. Oh, yeah. Big liar. He's always lying. Always Big lying. Liar. Um, yeah, so, so <laughs> Tajiri gets uh, removed when he tries to attack uh, 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 Bischoff. Chris Masters grabs him, throws him. Um, uh, and then le- the next seg- next part of the segment is Chris Masters being called to the state uh, the the witness uh, stand and being disqualified for giving his stage name. Uh, and Vince was like, "Well, no, no, no you're, that's not your name. Get him the fuck out of here." Uh, and then after that, they try to call Simon Dean to the stage. Now Simon Dean at the time was a fitness aerobics style gimmick. Um, kind of in the vein of like, um, uh, what's his face? Who the the Bofux guy? Um, the hell's oh that? shit! I know who you're talking about. Right? I yeah, like oh. he was like one of like the, one of those infomercial like fitness gurus where like he's trying to sell you on the Simon system where you can eat this, you can eat you know certain foods and this and that and whatnot. Basically, you know, low level, creatively bad guy where he's like you're fat so you know you need to you need to find yourself in better shape um and um but he doesn't show up the boogeyman shows up as we were talking about proceeds to have some nursery rhymes for eric bischoff to be like hey like your time is up all while while there's a giant earthworm is hanging out of his nose Yeah. yeah, that uh, was I, crazy. I thought that was a ring. I thought that was a nose ring. <laughs> <laughs> Not even gonna lie. And I was like, "Yeah, no, Suze, that's an earthworm." I was like, "What?" Yeah. Uh, yes. Just again, another witness that if I was the defense in this court case, I'd just be like, "I don't understand why the prosecution has called this man uh, <laughs> just to freak, <laughs> just to freak out the court." I guess I don't know. Are you trying to throw everybody off? What's happening here? The- the thing is, the court nobody called the boogeyman to the stand. He just showed up, <laughs> which is why everybody's like, "Hey, yo, what the fuck is he gone?" Except, uh, except, um, uh, McFoley, who was content eating his moon pies, um, because moon the- pies. <laughs> right before them, Vince McMahon called for recess, and McFoley said, "Sweet recess." And then he saw in his lunch was a moon pie. And not one moon pie, but several moon pies. And Suze, do you want to share what, the, your, what your take with everybody was? I'm not a big moon pie fan. Um, yeah. I feel like they were really big in Nashville. Yeah, so they're like from Tennessee. And I'm just not a big moon pie person. The fun. idea of them seems good. Well, like, I feel like. Cho- yeah, but chocolate, then they, like, marshmallow. The execution, like, is not great. It's not a good chocolate. Like. Because they would, they would give these out, like, in Nashville places. Mm. If I remember. Because rem- there's, like, a moon pie, like, factory. Or, like, building thing. Um, it's like right by the Johnny Cash Museum, actually. But you, they're like not that good. What did you say that they were wagon, uh, wagon wheels? Yeah, you can't. Are they called wagon wheels? I mean, 
the whole thing with wagon wheels mm. or moon pies is that whole ex- section of the grocery store. You got like Twinkies and the Hostess cupcakes. What are you doing grabbing moon pies? Yeah. Yeah. So... Nick Foley was very excited. <laughs> yeah. So it's it's a <laughs> like it's a marshmallow chocolate covered marshmallow cookie, but like the cookie's not great. It's arguably too much marshmallow. And the chocolate itself is like a, a not a good chocolate. Like yeah. it's a it's it like I'm with you. They're trash. Wagon wheels, moon pies, trash. The song Wagon Wheel, good song. That's yeah, song. it's a classic. Mm-hmm. It's, a, it's one of the few country songs that I will, or folky songs even. Uh, if you want to go, it's a it's thing. like a very common song to hear in a Nashville bar. Like from a live band, I feel like that you sing with all your friends when you're drunk. Yeah. I, oh, it's a, it's it is a top five like drunk sing along song. Like, uh, you know, Journey, banger. Journey, Journey Wagon was Wheel. a good, yeah, Journey. Uh, what else? Mr. What? Brightside. Mr. Brightside's yeah. Or uh, like <laughs> Fall Out Boy. Oh, like, and it, yeah, really, anything from Fallout Boy, but it, I think, like, I feel like Sugar We're Going Down Swinging is, like, the number one. That's, like, the number one, but I feel like the people who, like, grew up listening to Fallout Boy, like, could probably sing any of those songs drunk with their friends. Yeah. Like, I, Not I feel me, like... though. I, mean... <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I, was say, I feel like we're all in the same age group, so I feel like that, that, that applies to the three of us, of, like, just... That era of like the, like just like, it's not what it, it wasn't necessarily punk rock, but it wasn't necessary. But it wasn't also like I guess it's technically considered like, it's not emo either. But it's just like, it's just that genre, that that style. Like your Fall Out Boys, your All American right. Rejects, your Panic at the Disco. All American Rejects got so much playtime in my sister's car in high school. (laughs) Because my sister was a senior in high school when I was a freshman. And I don't even remember the name of the album. We played that album to death. Or the CD. To death. Like, on the way to school. These kids these days don't know anything about the Black Parade. (laughs) (laughs) Look, uh, My Chemical Romance uh, had, had... Everybody, not just the emo kids, everybody was screaming about the black parades and that they're not okay. Um, I just remember, like, I feel like kids these days don't even remember, like, going on MySpace to try to find new music. Did you? I saw this, uh, <laughs> I saw this, uh, tweet and it was, it was like, oh, like, you know, kids these, you know, like, uh, you know, Gen, Gen Z have now found, got to the point where they don't know anything about, like, or like we've gotten to the point where MySpace is no longer like a knowledgeable thing, because it was like somebody was like, Twitter should really have a feature where like you have like a playlist, it you know, uh, where like when they come to your page, they can see what's your top song or two. And I'm like, yeah, you spent like hours <laughs> picking your song for MySpace. <laughs> the song you wanted to make sure the song was in tune with the effects that you put on your page, like. Like, like the okay. code changes because you <laughs> thought you were coding. I remember yeah. this. Yeah, all of us were young hackers in America, and I guess Canada. I don't know. Can I have MySpace? Oh. Evil? Yeah, I had MySpace. I I couldn't deal with that shit though. I always had to get my friend to do all that HTMLing because it's like I wanted to change the font red, and now my page don't work anymore. I was. This was a wild place. I didn't have a in MySpace retrospect. page. I, no, in we had, we had MySpace I, and I we had, had Nextopia. I had grown like men talking to me in MySpace. It was actually <laughs> probably not appropriate. Definitely not. <laughs> like all the stuff you hear about, like on TV or your parents warn you about, I just like ignored that. <laughs> Don't talk to strangers. <laughs> They're not a stranger. They're my top six friend. Yay! Look at I'd me. be like, yeah, I'm talking to some guy named John. Like he's a plumber. Like my parents <laughs> would be like, what? <laughs> they're like you're in sixth grade like you can't be talking to a full adult and i'd be like it's fine 
Meanwhile, we're, my we're sister the... was wild. I was a rebel. I didn't care. I was like, he doesn't know where I live. It's fine. <laughs> meanwhile, <laughs> meanwhile, your your MySpace page had the direct <laughs> coordinates, the longitude and latitude, as your like, uh, Susie, like fifty seventh latitude, fifty seven point two degree latter, you know, latitude forty seven longitude. Did. I guarantee you, there is a way to know where I live from my MySpace. <laughs> And it was, like, very clear I was a child from my pictures. Well, like, so I didn't have a MySpace because I, for as online as I was as a kid, I I was, like, MySpace was, like, the last place I, I like, would end. Like, I I got a Facebook, like, I think I want to say 2009. I got, like, I I created a Facebook account. And then, like, the next month or two, I made a fucking Twitter account. And I'm like, oh, Twitter's so much better. Fuck this. This is great. You know, nobody's on Twitter, so I can I could tweet about all of the my, you know, all the girls I like by name. And then they started following me. Oh, I'm like, oh my no. Gosh. Oh no. <laughs> Bad job. Man, I, yeah, Twitter I, uh, was Wild West when it first yeah. came out. Oh yeah. I, mean, I got on is. Twitter super late. I, I, I only joined Twitter when uh it's the, the dumbest reason to join Twitter was when the Colin Kaepernick stuff was going on. I'd see these tweets inside the Yahoo articles I was reading. I was like, oh, hell no. I got to reply to these people, which is the worst <laughs> idea to start a Twitter for. <laughs> I got to let these I people know that they're like dumb. In the mud. <laughs> <laughs> no, and that Twitter, is why I'm not on Twitter anymore. <laughs> Twitter was crazy because people would tweet about other people like using their names. Mm-hmm. Thinking like oh, no one I know is actually going to follow me on yeah. Twitter. Like, that happened to me in high school. When someone said I looked like Jar Jar Binks, they tweeted my full name out. Oh, did, did you guys? And I did, was like, you didn't think I would see this? Like, we, because he just thought, like, it's Twitter. It's the wild, like, who sees what I tweet? No, all the mean shit at my school happened on Facebook. Do you guys not remember early Facebook, The Wall? Where you just had a wall and people I could remember that. and people could just post whatever they wanted on your wall. So you, they could also you know, request like, like to be in a relationship with you. Oh that right, happen, right, that, yeah. That would happen to me. And you'd have to settle your friends, yeah, as like your family, or else they weren't really your friends, and everybody'd be mad. <laughs> but like the yeah. ranking friends on MySpace. Facebook was also kind of crazy too no the wall was an awful idea because then you'd have all these kids in your high school where it's like all right we're all gonna just pick on this one person everybody go to their wall and say something mean about them yeah like that it's like facebook i just posted like subliminal messages and um just i was down bad uh, a young young girl hey. was down horrendously down uh all over the fact all over the fact that the the one the the one girl that he had a crush on that week did not want to go on a date with him that weekend so that i moved on to another and i would say quote these hoes man these hoes i think that was an actual (laughs) thing i said um not proud of it acknowledging i said it um there's far worse things i probably said um but hey, uh, everybody's had their status set to sad song lyrics. Oh, oh, I always did. Yeah, all the time. Sad Maybe. ones, romantic ones, <laughs> mostly sad. Sad, but had had a good had a good had a good conversation with a member of the preferred sex. So and so is feeling on top of the world. <laughs> or it's like bored at home. Call slash text me. Yeah. But no one called or texted you. I don't know. The uh, <laughs> no, <that's-> no. <laughs> just ah uh, the the hey, hey uh, bored. What's everybody up to on a, a Friday? Friday at seven. Sunday. No s- Sunday. Had a nice quiet weekend. It felt nice to be refreshed. Can't wait for school. <laughs> like nothing between them. It's just like. I, I got to a point where, it, um, I, like, I, I would see, like, my friends would, like, we, we ended up getting to a point where, as a joke, we would comment on each other's, like, like, one of us would go, hey, like, 
like this or that, like, you know, like, uh, you know, hey, what's everybody up to? And then we would all go and be like, hey, look, so I'm hanging out with so-and-so. Oh, I'm hanging out with so-and-so. I'm ha-. So basically, like, there was, like, an odd number in our group. I think there was, like, seven, seven and nine of us. So, like, we just pair off. Oh, I'm hanging out with Brad. Oh, well, I'm hanging out with Sam. I'm hanging out with Derek, uh, you know. And it's like, oh, so fuck me then, right? <laughs> so, but and then Sunday would come around, and then you'd post the picture with all of us together. But everybody but the original person goes, we felt bad for so and you know, we felt bad, felt bad for Kevin, so we invited him out. <laughs> like, hey. Basically, like because it, it got to a point at, at school, like we're just like everybody's posting, got nothing to do, like hit me up, and it's like, no, I don't want to. I don't miss any of this at all. Like no, yeah, posting something on your Facebook, and then like going out of town where you don't have internet because you didn't have a smartphone, and then like thinking people will have said something when you got home after three days, and then you get home, it's like no notifications, no messages. Yeah. <laughs> then you get the wow. then, it, you're, then you get your birthday right, and your birthday you're like. I've got 70 people saying happy birthday to me. This is amazing. Yes, it's my day. The dopamine. This feels great. Now as an adult yeah. who doesn't really use Facebook now, it's like, oh, who are the sad sex still sending me Facebook I messages? know. It's so random. Like, the people who wish me happy birthday still, I'm like, why? <laughs> yeah. Like, who the fuck? I haven't, I haven't talked to con- you. Y- yeah. Years, if not decades. Like, Potentially decades. Decade. I'm not aging myself that much. <laughs> yeah, no, I, <laughs> I'm right there. With I don't you. even, wait, where, how did we get to this conversation? We were talking about, oh boy. From what, the yeah, trial. We were talking, all right, so we were talking about Boogeyman, right? No, Moon Pies, that's what it was. We, we were talking about Moon Pies and then talking about uh, the fact that I'm recalling this now. We talk about Moon the Pies, song. then the song Wagon Wheel, the music, then okay. then just in general, my like how we would put songs like that on MySpace. That's how we got from there from the trial. Yes. But back to the trial. Uh, Those were psychos. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's, like, hey, fuck it. <laughs> what tangent? Can we go back? Uh, this is how so, my mind is at work. Just so you know, it's like I'm focused on a trial and something legal, and then I end up on some weird side of the internet. That's Everybody basic. hires these as your lawyers. Look, uh, so the episode I did for Christmas, we talked about Santa Claus, who is like the evil Santa Claus, and we ended up talking about Robin Williams, some Robin Williams movie where he's a creepy guy, except he's not actually creepy because it's Robin Williams. And then we were talking about a movie called uh, Bunny Bunny Easter Bunny Kill Kill. Don't know how we got to that, really. I really don't. I'm. I literally listened to it to edit it today at work. Don't know what the hell. Do, have no idea how we got there still, but we did. That's uh, a dork side. Uh, so Boogeyman, uh, comes out, does all this shit, uh, and then, uh, the last, the last uh witness that gets called is by Mick Foley. The prosecution calls out Maria. Who Maria at the time is the ditzy, dumb, naive, um, hot uh, backstage interviewer, and they're and and the def- you know Eric Bischoff, Jonathan Coachman. Oh, they're all. <laughs> this is <laughs> no reason to be afraid of this. None. And then she just starts being dropping off like capricious and malicious. Malicious. Uh, and just big ass fucking words, and like this is the first time she's like showing. It's like, can you ask him? Can you have the? So- can Mister Sacco ask me the question? And then she just leaves, <laughs> like, and continue like after is like, fuck this guy. I know these words. All right, I'm gonna leave and go get. And like, she's like an actual smart person, it who obviously was playing up the part. Uh, but then as she's leaving, like everybody's like, damn. And Eric Bischoff like, shut the fuck up. She just got me in. Tr-. Like, she dunked on me. Like, I don't care how hot she is. She dunked on me. I'm fucked. Um, which, you know, we, I feel like we've all been there. You know, we, the, the, you know, member of the preferred attraction, uh, embarrasses you. And, uh, everybody's like appreciating how attractive they are. And 
you're like, ah, I don't care. I'm I'm down bad. I need to go tweet about this or post on my Facebook page that you know these hoes. Yeah, I mean, but these hoes. It, it never happened to me while I was on defense for about to lose my job. <laughs> this is true, right? Yeah, there's there's a level to it where you're down bad. <laughs> also, um, like. I appreciate that not everybody came dressed for the occasion. Uh, you had Chris Masters as your bailiff, not wearing a shirt. I know Suze wasn't complaining. Um, Maria Canales coming in with even less An fabrics. Outfit. Even less I fabric. I don't know where she got that outfit. It's a nice outfit. I need, I need a good outfit for Vegas. Like, it was a good <laughs> outfit. Uh, but, like, Tajiri wore a suit. Davari wore a suit. Oh yeah, like you wouldn't be allowed in a courtroom like that. No, not at all. Like, which no, is also a judge, a judge would be like hell no. Which is also funny because like in like the the Hollywood like like other Hollywood media like uh, representations of it, like if you call on a hooker, they are absolutely going to be dressing like one, as if we needed to know that. Hey, look, look, they they got they got to come here, even like the serious ones. Like they're like, yeah, this yeah is I mean, my it's best. just crazy because like, why would you want your witness if you're an attorney? Why would you want your witness to look like a hooker to the jury? Right, you're a lawyer. Spend some extra, you know, put a little, get them a nice little, you know, little dress that's a little bit better, maybe. I mean, yeah, uh, I mean, you want them to look somewhat presentable or believable. And I'm not saying, okay, I'm not trying to like shame her outfit. No, in any not. way, like it just wouldn't happen. Mm -hmm. No, no, absolutely. Like it's the thing. None of this is happening. Like, they, remember, I, I, for, I actually not remember. I forgot to tell everybody this who did not watch it. This all started with with Vince McMahon driving a trash truck <laughs> into the arena. <laughs> That's how this all started. Was the judge drove in a trash truck and basically said, "I'm going to take out the trash." Provided, provided, you know, I, I give him a case. I give him a fair trial. But I'm going to take out the trash. And it's like, what the fuck? Um, so after Maria... Why is my judge doing a bit? <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> why am I... Why is this a sketch comedy show? What the fuck? Um, so, uh, Vince McMahon says, you know what? We're going back to the arena. You guys are going to give your closing trials or closing arguments. And that, and we're good. Like, and then we'll decide the fate of Eric Bischoff. Go back to the arena. Uh, they've backed the truck into the arena now so that the trash end is closer to the ring. Also, when you can, if you're going to, uh, you know, drive it in or drive out, it's a little easier. Uh, they do the closing arguments. Mick Foley basically goes, I'm going to keep it short. He doesn't deserve the job and you... Fucking brought a trash truck. You might as well use it, right? <laughs> like, that's a <laughs> terrible, terrible closing argument. I, as a, if I was a judge, I'd be like, "That's not a good reason to like." Yeah, we brought handcuffs. It doesn't mean we had to. That's not how any of this works. Uh, yeah, I mean, you don't have to rent the handcuffs. Though I mean, a truck rental—that's a whole thing. It like, fully has a point. I guess I don't know, Sue's. <laughs> No, it's bad. <laughs> uh, so, um, you know, Eric Bischoff then get fire basically fires Jonathan Coachman right before the closing argument. Uh, says, "I got this. I think it's better for me to do that." Which, as Sue said uh, while we we're watching it, that can't happen. You don't want for like sometimes they actually do let defendants represent themselves in court and it usually does not go well <laughs> and that's all i'm gonna say yeah i uh like <laughs> it just doesn't go well no it really does like the only reason like i, I can't even unless like you're you can 100 percent. but at that point like i feel like if you had um an incomp like purposefully incompetent uh, like defense attorney like i feel like there's 
room to like ask for a retrial based off that if you can prove it right like that's a thing usually you do that after the trial that's usually like an appeal out of right is ineffective assistance of counsel gotcha um but like a lot of times like you don't want your client testifying right no like you don't want them talking at all so it'd be it's crazy that he gives the closing argument and and the, and the thing, so the opening argument for Jonathan Coachman was that Eric Bischoff's an asshole, but he's not supposed to be nice. He gets he that's not his job. His job is you know to... what's crazy is like people have done that before. <laughs> like a lot of times, like because I watch a lot of Dateline too. I'm not gonna mm. lie. A lot of times, like these guys who kill their wives, like they're assholes, and they killed their wives, right? Because they like cheat and they're like bad people but their attorneys are like well he's a cheater and he's not a good guy but don't worry like he didn't kill his wife it usually doesn't go over well (laughs) to be like he's an asshole but don't think that he did all these other things that an asshole would do I'm establishing all these points that I'm a terrible person but I'm not (laughs) that terrible yeah right like it's a (laughs) It's a shaky, it's a shaky defense at best. I agree. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Saying like, look, I, I'm not a good person, but you didn't hire me to be a good. You, you hired me to separate money from these schmucks' pockets, and I've been doing that pretty well. I think I've been doing that pretty good, right? In fact, I got an idea. Hear me out, boss, judge. Uh, we do this, the thing that made a lot of money. We do it again. Like, oh, all right. Well, we'll see. And then. Crashing through the gates of the court, aka coming out the tr- the entrance. The best part of this whole WWE thing. champion John Cena. <laughs> to which I think my favorite reaction was Sue's going, "What is he doing here?" Like, what, like <laughs> what? I was what? confused. <laughs> like, what? What? <laughs> like, there, and no, because you know, I, I from what we saw, also like without giving the full context of how we got here, like he had been a thorn in Eric, Eric Bischoff had been trying to basically get the championship off of John Cena. He didn't like John Cena's champion, whatever. And he's like, look, you're just not going to be my champion. And he has spent like months trying to get him to get him, you know, get rid of the, get, to get somebody to take the championship off of John Cena. Um, so they have like this little rivalry. So it, it makes sense in the context of that. However, none of that is brought up during the actual trial. <laughs> like if I'm, if I'm Mick Foley, I'm going, look, Vince, he's out here actively trying to strip the championship, doing everything in his power. And it might not work because Vince did that to Stone Cold Steve Austin. So he might just go, well, nothing wrong with that. Um, but yeah, John Cena comes out and he's like, look, this guy. He sucks, Vince. You are a man of free speech and freedom of choice. Look at you. You look ridiculous in that outfit. But you chose to look ridiculous. And he's like, you know what? You're right. I am a man of free Like, you get to roast your boss on live television. And your boss goes, you got a point. And then a thousand surprise witnesses. Words to, word, word to, uh, uh, who was it? Uh. Uh, no, I was thinking of the wrestler. They they had a wrestler uh, lawyer whose name was uh, relative to that. Um, forget some notable lawyer. They had a bunch of surprise witnesses, ten thousand to be exact. Basically said, "Hey, would you would you fire? Do you want to see Eric Bischoff keep his job? Do you want to see him get fired?" And they're like, "No." And they're like, "Yeah, fire him." And then uh, Vince is like, "Well." I like the idea. I think you got something there with the idea there, Eric. Too bad you're not going to be able to watch it because uh, you're fired. <laughs> and then not only did he lose the trial, he lost the trial, and then immediately got f uh <laughs> thrown on his back, um, to which I think – I don't think anything as a client or as a defendant could be worse than losing your case and then being physically assaulted. I mean, uh, I mean <laughs> at at the beginning of this, who who didn't think that Vince was gonna not break out the classic catchphrase, "You're fired." Right. Of course, Bischoff wasn't gonna make it. 
He he was doomed from the start. Absolutely, he was. Yeah, the, no chance, no chance. He, he had he had a hail he mary. Tro- he but... drove an entire garbage truck in to <laughs> put him inside of it. Yeah, and, and he... he was the judge. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> do you think do you think Eric Bischoff as a can can appeal this this court case? Do you think he could get a I retrial? Hope so get I mean, a different it's judge. Really hard. It's really hard to get a retrial. But... I feel like there's a incredible amount of evidence that um he did not get a fair trial uh, in it fact, was truly a circus i would say it was a kangaroo court is what it was uh all, yeah, absolutely from the fact that uh he didn't even get to choose his own representation and he absolutely could have uh he didn't opt to have somebody re- represent him he was just g- giving it to him uh and he did not appreciate that um though jonathan coachman came in wearing quote johnny cochran glasses um, the all the way up to the fact that uh, the bailiff didn't have a shirt on. Um, it was good though. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> agreed. Uh, you know, he was a handsome looking man. Uh, also in like, uh, at the time, Chris Masters was just this, just like his whole thing was that he's the masterpiece because he's chiseled. Uh, and he very much was very dumb. Was a... he's actually kind of boring? Like honestly, <laughs> Bill could have been hotter. Like, like, you know, I I don't I I don't a know how too like generic hot. So he's me. just but... okay. So because so if he had like a little bit more more facial hair, a little bit more character in the body, he just just was like so boring. I don't know. Like he, hot he, but boring. He popped. He did the he did the titty pop. He popped his pecs. You didn't think that was... <laughs> I don't know how I feel about that. Like, in, in a courtroom? I would trade, like, a shirtless man in, like, really good sweatpants for the Tibby stuff. <laughs> uh, Susan's like, you know, everything about that I can get by. Get by. You know what? I, I, I'll, I'll, I'll accept all this part. Except the bailiff. You know how bailiff. fun it would be to be an attorney in court and you just get to look at a hot person the entire time i mean yeah i feel like that's distracting though i feel like there's like i, I, I mean also... like i said i'm not the one ending up in the dumpster at the end with the garbage truck <laughs> sue's just tanking absolute tanking the case her client begging for help Please, Miss Susie, please do. Can you can you at least call a single witness? Sue's just in La La Land, staring at the sweatpants, going. <laughs> I'm gonna get like disbarred after Fuck. someone in Utah hears this conversation. Sue's <laughs> like, just care at all about her clients. Sue's just fucking disassociating live in front of the everybody, going, just like twirling the hair. Yeah. No. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> that would probably happen to me. I'm like known for having this is ugh, so embarrassing. I'm like known for having like very obvious facial expressions. Like when I was in law school, if people said things that were crazy, like people could see it on my face in class and then talk to me about it. So <laughs> uh jeez, I'm just a go ahead, go ahead. So like like I'm really bad at like I don't have a good poker face. Maybe that's the best way to put it. That's yeah. So if I was distracted by sweatpants, like in a trial, it would be very <laughs> apparent. So it was disassociating, like, biting the bottom, bottom, bottom lip biting. Oh, for sure. Her cl- I would be doing Eric, all of that. Winking. Eric, Eric trying Bischoff to make just... like eyes at the person. <laughs> it would be. It would make my job a lot more interesting. Sue's so trying to get held in contempt. Uh. Yes, Your Honor. <laughs> Let the bailiff take me away. <laughs> Specifically, <laughs> the bailiff. Uh. <laughs> he can put handcuffs on me. I don't care. <laughs> can you imagine? No, um, but also like for you, but for your for your like the best interests of your of your career and your life. Yes, I can. Like, because you know, I think. I think that's a fair trade. You just get this bar. You, there's other. There's other. There's other states. There's yeah, worse. Yeah, that's true. There are. There's, other states. there's 49 states. You can get 49 other states. You can get this in 48 states and still have two options. You know. 
Yeah, I just go jurisdiction hopping <laughs> from one bailiff to the I gotta, babe, I gotta move. Why? Well, <laughs> jumped your bones yeah, in front I of did. a judge and got disbarred, so I have to go to a different state. Uh, that's see, if I was the prosecution, I would specifically be like request for a hot bailiff. Be, be like, then we're going to put that bailiff. You know what? They normally work this shift. That's when the trial is. That's Susie over there. We're gonna. This is a slam dunk case if we get a hot bailiff and some tight pants. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> going, going up. Hey, hey. Can you stuff your pants today? Stuff them. Here you go. They just give him a banana, like, <laughs> right before the trial. <laughs> <laughs> meanwhile, meanwhile, they give him the banana, and then, like, you know what to do with this. And he's like, yeah, I do. And then, like, fast forward to it. Like, he's just sitting there eating the banana as the trial <laughs> You idiot. You were supposed to put that in your pants. Why would I put that in my pants? You said I knew what I'd do to it. <laughs> but... <laughs> Uh, so Eric Bischoff loses it, gets FU'd, humiliated, but it's not over just yet because Vince McMahon picks him up, brushes off his shoulder, says, you're going to be all right, kid, and lets him go out with dignity. Psych, he throws his ass into a fucking <laughs> trash, uh, trash truck. They close it on him, and Vince McMahon drives it out, honking the horn, and the entire arena is chanting, na, 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 hey, hey, goodbye. It's such a stupid Incredible. bit. It is such a, it's, <laughs> it has it nothing was not to do with stupid for it. at all. It was great. Vince just wanted the dump truck there. He, somebody it's, backstage was like, what have you said? We're, you're taking out the trash. And he's like, yeah, I like that idea. That's funny. Let's do it. What if we got a trash truck, Vince? Yeah. Yeah. Get, get my, give me the, <laughs> give him a blank check. <laughs> like, what the fuck? Uh, but yeah, no. I think um, he just likes renting trucks. That's that's my theory. Anybody who pitches any sort of equipment or truck that needs to be rented, Vince is down that very second. I feel like he just likes to be the center of attention, right? Like he drives this truck in, <laughs> then he gets to be the judge. Like he just wants to do everything. I mean, I don't blame him. I you know I I I, I if I, if I'm you know the boss. Of an entertainment company, I would like to do a little bit of everything. Now, mind you, I would not go to the extremes of Vince McMahon. Vince McMahon has gone far further. Uh, he has humiliated women, uh, including, including his wife, his daughter, daughter and wife. Um, he has made he once he made Trish Stratus strip down to her bra and panties and bark like a dog. Um, <laughs> oh my gosh! Uh, he has on multiple times insinuated an affair with several different women. Why would you want to insinuate an affair with yourself? I I don't know. Like, I, I I mean, it's the, it's the power of it. It's like crazy. Like, Hey, I may have cheated on my wife. I'm like a really cool guy. Yeah. Well, that's the thing (laughs) is it's, it's, he, it's never, he never plays it up for like for people to cheer for him. It's always when he's like it's weird. Like he understands that morally what he is like what he is portraying is bad. Like he's like, "Yeah, people will hate me." And he's just sitting there gleefully doing it. I'm like, "I mean, you're just justifying oh, I- being able to make out with hot women who are your employees kind of." It's very weird. Does he still, okay, I have a question. Does he still have, like, a real central role in all of the, like, new episodes? No, no. He, he oh, is, no. He's, he's very behind the scenes now because he doesn't like how he looks on camera. So when he does show oh. up on camera, it's, it's got to be a really good reason. Like, uh, the last two years, the only reason why he showed up on camera was to address, like, the WWE like fans before like WrestleMania being like, look, I know, I know you guys can't be here, but we're gonna put on a show. Times are tough right now. We're gonna do our because this is like early pandemic, so they're like, yeah, I'm gonna 
we're gonna we're gonna put on a show that you know deserving of your of your of your fandom and whatnot. Um, did that. He basically was there when uh, he introduced the Undertaker when the Undertaker retired uh, last this time last year, and he showed up at WrestleMania to welcome back fans this year. And then showed up one more time in like July when they regularly were, were having fans in attendance. So he, he's, but every time he's progressively worse and worse. Yeah, he, he's really old now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. But yeah, no. So I was kind of hoping he'd still be on it. To be honest. <laughs> <laughs> He he I like kind of like how chaotic and messy he is. He um he will show up every so often or prior to the last couple of years he would show up every so often to get like involved with something and then most times it ended with him getting his ass beat and like he he would then go and get surgery so it was like well he's got to go get surgery cuz he had to get surgery for something else. Um oh. so he was like he one time he got head butted, and then the guy did a frog splash on him, and they're like, "Oh, he broke his hip." You know, he broke Vince McMahon's hip, <laughs> and Vince McMahon had to go get hip surgery. Well, it comes to find out, they they made that segment up just so that they could explain why he was getting hip surgery because he didn't want anybody oh, reporting that he was getting hip, like hip surgery. And it's like we understand that you're getting hip surgery because you need you're old and you need because you're old. He but you don't broke his hip walking to get the newspaper. <laughs> you don't have to write a full five, ten minute segment of television to justify to people that you're getting surgery. You don't have to. This do is it. what I'm saying. He likes to be the center <laughs> of attention. Like everything has to be so big and like. Mm-hmm. It's not just that he had hip surgery. It's that some wild, crazy thing happened to him. Yeah, it's just. I think it's just and the point whole world needs to know. Even if he wasn't crazy, playing the character of Mr. McMahon for the 20, 30, 40 years, that probably just made him crazy. Yeah. yeah. How do you separate that? That's what I want to know because it seems like it's such a really big part of like him. It's, it's because, well, th- I mean, I don't separate it. I mean, right now as we're recording, he just, they, WWE just like fired another like eight people. Uh, of their their contracted uh, wrestlers. Wait, um, but did Vince like fire them? I mean, he's the boss. Like, so how he, does that work? Like, is he really the boss, or is he like this fictional boss? So like, this no, is no, what he's I'm no this. Understand. So so he is actually the boss. W he he is the the CEO owner, or he's the owner of WWE. I should say. Um, he is, uh, like he is, been that for thirty some odd years now. Almost forty years, um, he has been ruthless in business outside the ring. Um, I mean, fuck, like he beat the fucking U.S. government in court. Like, you know, <laughs> I remember correctly though. You said in a previous episode he didn't always play the character of Mister no. McMahon. He used to be. The, he, he, he just used. Was to he be like announcer. reluctant to do it? Yeah, he, he, he never, was just an announcer. He didn't want he, to do it. He swore up and down that no one would believe. Like they're like you're the everybody knows you're the owner. He goes, no, 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 nobody knows I'm the owner of this place. Like everybody knows you're the owner, Vince. You're going to court. It's covered in the news. You are going to court for supplying, like you know, being involved in fucking steroid uh, selling and trafficking. And he's like, no, 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 not our wrestling fans. It's like yes, our wrestling fans. Everybody fucking knows it. Like. Even the people not watching are, and it, he's he was very reluctant in going into that position as being known as the boss. Um, and it wasn't until he basically screwed Bret Hart out of a title um, at the Montreal screw job, and then that's when he became like, all right, now he's Mister McMahon. And it's like, no, he's always been this guy. Like, so for me, he is he is who he is on screen. Like. But people closer to him will be like, no, 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 there's a difference. And I'm like, I don't give a fuck. But yeah. But uh, let us wrap up here because we've been doing a... We actually got the full two hours. Um, 
final final takeaways from the trial of Eric Bischoff for either of you. I mean, I can go first. Yeah, go ahead, Sue. My takeaway is that my job could be a lot more fun and interesting, but it's not. Um, I don't know. I really enjoyed watching it. Um, good. I feel like I want to go back and like watch some more now. <laughs> Just more wrestling in general? Yeah, I mean, like it's all on Peacock, right? Yeah, it's all on the... Co- well, it is... If you have the $5 Peacock, yeah. Is it like it, the... It's one of the... Like, the one you pay for. Yeah, yeah. So five dollar is WWE. You get the WWE Network with ads, and then ten dollars is uh, without without ads. So if you have the, yeah, if, I have like you, the five dollar one. Then yeah, I'm gonna pe- run some back. I think. Yeah, it's all the. It's like almost everything they've ever done is on there, and everything they own, like they own libraries for other companies. Uh, they've got that there. So yeah, Peacock Network is a. I mean, for five bucks, you get. A whole lot. Um, what about you, Evil? Final takeaways. Uh, my final takeaway, I would say, is if you ever find yourself somehow in the WWE court as the defendant, just just walk out as soon as the thing starts, because <laughs> there, there's not going to be any rhyme or reason to your prosecute for your prosecution. So I I would just give up immediately, and that's what Eric Bischoff should have done. And you probably wouldn't end up in that trash truck. Yeah, just walk out. <laughs> just take the L. Should no take show the court. L. Take no the show, L. No show. No show court. Take the L and be on the run. Uh, but with that, we will wrap. We're we're done here. Evil. One last time, you want to let the people know. Uh, which you know, plug whatever you want to plug. You know. Well, like I said at the beginning, I have a no Twitter, no Facebook. If you try and find me on Discord, I will block you. But there is one way to get a hold of me. Big hats. So, listener, if you open up your Apple Podcast app, go to Dork Side of the Ring, leave a five-star review, Grum will read whatever that you write down there. So if you need to get a message from me, I would say that would be the best way to do it. That, wow, that that's, was good. That was really good. That's good. That's nice. That's you know what? I almost forgive you for being a Raptors fan. I'm sorry, Grum. It's okay. I'll get over it eventually. I, I know, I'm, and I'm not sorry about it. You know uh, that. I know you're. I know. I know. <laughs> you. It was just performative sorrow. I understand. Suze, what about you? Uh, plug your stuff or other plug people's stuff. stuff. I don't, I mean, this is a great podcast. Everyone should give it five stars. Leave a nice little review. Um, but I don't really have anything to plug. Um, pretty boring, like I said at the beginning. Um, I will say if you are a CPF listening to this, sign up for Secret Santa. Well, Secret Santa is going to be over. It's going to be so over. Never so... mind. Sign up for Secret Santa in 2022. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Put it in your calendar. Like, mark it down. Mark it down. November 15th, 2022. Secret Santa. Oh Secret my Santa. Ask Suze about Secret Santa. That's what you need to do. I'll have to put it in my phone. Uh, but yeah, all right. Well, Secret Santa 2022 is going to be a whole lot of fun. That's a whole. 11 months from now as you're listening to this listener um maybe even 12 who knows i'm i think i don't know just yet but hey thank you guys for coming on i appreciate it uh thank you girl. it was a blast can't wait to get it you was guys so again. fun sounds like suze is gonna get got the wrestling itch maybe suze will join us for some some you know watch along wrestlings uh in 2022 oh boy hey cps hold her hold we gotta hold suze to it a lot of Saturday ones, though. A lot of Saturday pay-per-views. That's okay. So, so I know those are big nights for Suze. No, I've been on good behavior recently. Which means you're going to stay yeah, on good behavior. Yeah, that's true. Which means you're going to stay on the good behavior. Right, exactly. <laughs> uh, Suze, evil, evil Suze. Thank you guys for coming on. It was a blast. And uh, I'll talk to you guys soon. Hey, take it easy. Bye. 
Fun episode in the books. Another one, the first one of the Patreon. First one I'm doing in the new year. First one I'm editing in the new year. Publishing in the new year. All that shit. Well, I guess technically not publishing because uh, last week's episode went up the, on the third. So I guess it's not, you know what I mean. You know what I mean. The first one I'm doing, I am personally putting together in 2022. A lot of fun. Thank you, Suze. And thank you, to Evil ESPN as well. You can follow Suze at Suzy B on, on Twitter. And Evil does not have the socials. No socials for Evil. That's all right. A lot of fun, though, uh, had by all. Cannot wait to have them back on. Um, I don't know if I can... I don't know if there's more legal stuff I can get. I mean, I guess there's legal stuff surrounding things we could get Suze to talk about. But Suze, the official lawyer of the Dork Side of the Ring, not actually official, the unofficial uh, lawyer of Dork Side of the Ring, uh, thank you guys again for coming on. That was a lot of fun. Next week's episode is a, is also fun. It's got it's got fun in the name. The topic we got is got fun in the name. Oh, it's so good. Yeah, what a what a segue that I'm just derailing now to buy myself some time. But yeah, no, it's a fun one next week. Firefly Funhouse with post QB Kyle, just QB post QB Kyle. My friends Kyle and Cheesy from Twitch. A lot of good times had by there. It's a fun one because those two, um, this is the kind of content that I love to do, which is exposing my friends who have no idea that this thing happened to the thing that happened. Um, and uh, they're just like, what the fuck is this? Because even, I, like, this is a thing that's only two years old. This might be, uh, I, there's only one other thing that's happened in the last two years, I feel, that is super, that's that's really, that I'll cover in the next year or two. Um, and maybe the next month, perhaps? But a lot of fun was had by this one. This is also a newer thing, because it's, it's uh, Bray Wyatt taking on John Cena at WrestleMania 36 amid a global pandemic. Uh, and a Firefly Funhouse match. A lot of fun. Cannot wait to for you guys to listen to that. I can't wait to re-listen to it as I edit it. Uh, thank you guys again. If you haven't already, follow us on Twitter. Follow us on Instagram, at DorksideRing. You can follow me individually and all my non... Uh, all extra stuff. Not just wrestling stuff. Uh, but you can find me there. At I am Grum. You can also... Uh, continue to support this podcast free of charge. Tell the people about it. Share when we go when I when I post the thing about anything. You go ahead and hit that retweet, hit them likes. It'll help us grow through social media. You can also go to your Apple Podcast app, or I think actually that's it. I don't. I still don't think anybody else has a uh, has a, a review system. Go to the Apple Podcast app. Leave a five star review that helps us grow. Five star rating is great. Five star review is better. Um, it, it makes, it, it makes me feel good to see that there's people who are like, yeah, no, this was, this was a lot of fun. Thank you again. I appreciate the five stars there. Uh, we'll get, uh, we'll get those, uh, reviews read as soon as they come in. Uh, also continue to join the community, the larger grum.tv community. Just go to grum.tv. That's G R U M M dot TV. And you can join the discord, be a part of the community we got going on there. Everything we're going on over there, we've got the dork side stuff. I've got YouTube stuff. You can find my YouTube link in the description of the podcast. You can find it on my Twitter as well. You can also uh, go to. Uh, you also get, I guess, uh, the streams in the in that in the Discord, which is weird. I have to remember that I'm streaming in a Discord, a small Discord. The platform is much smaller. The stage is much smaller, but it's my stage that I have a lot more control over. Uh, and it's and it's also very cool. I, I really like the idea that I'm doing. I, I should probably put that on the YouTube at some point and have like a longer, you know, longer thing. That's not the, this is not the place for it. But anyways, um, got that going on. Also, uh, you can go to support.grum.tv. That's s u p p o r t dot g r u m m dot t v. Simple as that. I spelled it out for you, real nice and easy. Go there. That's the Patreon. If you want to, con if you want to help us even further, you want to help me out financially. You know, throw some, throw some, throw some coin at your grummer uh, and say, "Hey, thanks for the content. I really enjoy it. It brings me. It, it's a nice two hours plus a week that I don't have to worry about stuff, or you, you take my mind away from stuff, or you make it go by faster. That's great. I appreciate it. Also, uh, I appeared. I should say this before we go. I appeared on my, our friends. Uh, Lee and Youngest, they've been on this podcast, uh, they've been on this dork side before, they have their own podcast called Running Back the Hits, I ran back my favorite album of 2021, which was 
a, an evening with Silk Sonic. It's up on their feed. You are running back to hits. You can see the uh, it's on the Twitter. You go to the Twitter. It's there. I appreciate it. Thank you guys for having me on. I can't wait to have them on as a uh, themselves as a tandem for them to be here. Uh, appreciate it, guys. Thank you so much. I will be back next week with the Firefly Funhouse match with my friends from Twitch, Kyle and Cheesy, post QB and Cheesy, good friends, have enough laugh, because that's what we do here at the Dork Side of the Ring podcast. We don't take this shit too seriously because wrestling is at its best when no one is taking it seriously. I am Grum. I am glad that you guys came. Thank you for visiting me. Until next time, no one said it to you today. Let me be the first one to say it to you. I love you and... I'll see you guys next week here on the Dork Side of the Ring podcast. Ah.